Hi, I'm Vita Clocky with Vitas Collectibles. Uh, we're in my studio today and we're going to work on doing some evergreens, different styles, different ways of doing them, using different brushes. Um, please join me and I'll show you what my colors are and the brushes I'm going to use. The colors that I'll be using today are china paints that are ground with mineral oil, which is open to about a toothpaste consistency. I'm going to use a, an antique and a brown green, darkest green. Uh, I may add some shading green if uh, I do some extra little uh, arrangements or trees in the background. And of course a couple browns, red brown, darker brown if um, I'm going to do some branches or trunks. I use uh, my open painting medium, semi-open painting medium, along with Turpanoid Natural brush cleaner and for a soft wipeout, and then odorless mineral spirits for a good clean wipeout. Some of the brushes I will be using are synthetic angle brushes in different sizes, depending on the size of my tree that I'm going to be painting. And I'll also be using a larger filbert that is synthetic, along with a scroller, and a large wipeout tool and a finer wipeout tool. My sketch pencil is a, a Stabilo. And I want to show you first uh, a few things that I've learned about pine trees. I'm going to just do a quick little sketch here and show you. I always begin with the trunk because that helps me to judge where to stop with my top of my tree. One thing about uh, pine trees is the branches alternate pretty much across from each other slightly and when they're small and at the top they reach up and then they get a little bigger, of course, as they work their way down. And they're still somewhat reaching up. And then we get to the middle part of the tree and they start to lay more flat and then they turn up at the ends. So there's, the tips are still reaching up somewhat. So if you can kind of sketch your trees to do this, you get an idea of how they grow. And then as we get closer to the bottom, the branches get heavier. They start going downward, but the tips still come up somewhat. If you look at and really study trees, you'll notice um, some branches all go up, some all go down. It depends on the variety of the tree, of course. So this is just kind of a quick little sketch that you can do if you're going to be doing a foreground pine tree. But you can see how these go up somewhat and then they start to lay horizontal with a little bit of a upward tip on the end if you want to get technical about your growth of your trees. And then as we get towards the bottom, they start going downward. The main branch and tips up somewhat. Another way to do a loose type of a, an evergreen sketch is, of course, start with the trunk. And start out with a narrow zigzag. This will keep help you to keep from getting a bristle brush everything just perfect. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of these samples for you on here now and show you the difference, uh, you know, a tighter tree and a, a looser type of pine. If you look at samples, this is a perfect little Christmas tree, just perfect. Uh, I am seeing a little bit of white space in between, spaces for the birds to fly through. There's so many different uh, pine trees that you can pick from. 
I tend to like this style of, of pine that's loose and, and full at the top. This is a perfect little Christmas tree just like this one. If you like perfect little trees, you can do them that way with um, an even, pretty much a triangular shape there. But I think they're much more interesting if you can make them large and small, interesting outer edges, in and out. So you have to decide what you're looking for and um, go with that. If you're doing a forest, you don't want to do a bunch of perfect little trees. You want to do these loose spruce type of um, illustration. And let me show you now how I would treat both of these. Let's look at this one. Now I might go with this size of a angle brush to start. And I'm going to go into just a little bit of oil and condition that brush. Now when I load this synthetic scroller, I'm going to pull, 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 pull and load that on both sides. And when I come down to my porcelain, I always want to lay in my trunk first. I'm going to load again, and I'm going to tap, tap, tap just that tip. Tap, tap, tap the tip. Following those lines that I just drew earlier, doesn't have to be exact, but and tap, tap, tap. I think we play too much when we do this, and um, we expect everything to be so perfect. These are going up somewhat. I'm going to start laying them a little more horizontal as I come down. I'm flipping my brush over, reloading and flipping. So the tip is going the other direction. And I'm staying in my antique green yet for now. Mostly just using the tip of that brush. And now I'm getting a little thicker on the branches. They're going to get a little heavier as we go down. I think I need a little more oil on that brush. Load that brush on both sides. Tap, 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 tap. Going a little more horizontal and a little up at the ends. Trying not to make all these perfectly even here. Now these will get a little thicker as we go down. And it's like if you just go in and get this color in here. Of course I got that a little thick, but tap that down. down to the ground line there. Now I might go into a little bit darkest green up here on both sides of the brush. I'm going to load both sides. I'm just going to take that tip and pop a little dark here and there. Reload. Maybe I'll just continue down on this one side and then I'll flip my brush. Oop, a little bit dark there. I want to keep the darker closer to the center area when I do a full load. Go back, do another load. I'm going to turn it slightly using that tip. If you had a smaller angle brush, you could use that too. Whatever works best for you, it's best to just practice a little bit first. 
Now I got a little dark right there, so I'll push some of that back. Another little interesting thing you can do is kind of take the color off of your brush a little bit and bring some of those little branches down somewhat if you like a little detail. But that's just a simple little evergreen if you need to clean up a few areas or uh, put an area in here for the birds to fly through. You can knock a little light through there with your wipeout tool and then soften that. Gives a little bit of opening space there, here and there. So if you want to pull down a little detail with a few little branches Add a few little tips here and there and call it good. So that would be the evergreen that I drew the branches alternating side to side. Now I'm going to do a looser type of evergreen here. And I might go to my filbert, synthetic filbert brush for that. I'll take it over here and condition it into my oil a little bit just conditioning that brush. I'm not using that oil to paint with. Let's load, take it over to the loading zone, load it on both sides. One thing I should probably do before I start because this is um, so much of the trunk shows here. Let's put that trunk in with the scroller brush and a little brown. Let's lay that in first. Alright, back to the antique green and the filbert brush. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to turn my brush this way and just tap, 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 tap. Come on down and tap, 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 tap. Leave some little space between there. Come over here and do the same thing. Go right over the trunk. Tap, 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 tap. This is a good technique to use for distant trees. space through there. Maybe I'll connect that up a little bit. And try to be just a little loose with it. A little creative. So that might be a loose evergreen that you're finding in the in the forest. I'm going to go into darkest green now. I'm going to load that brush front and back. And I'll tap a little darker value here and there. I'm kind of pushing as I as I do these darker values here and there just to give it a little bit of interest. bit of depth. Nothing too serious, just a little fun. Fun way to do little quick little evergreens. Now I can clean this filbert if you wanted to add snow to any of these, which I do to a lot of my ornaments and that. So I'm going to clean this brush into my odorless mineral spirits. Good and dry. If I were going to put snow on this pine tree, I would start at the top and hit the top of those branches and alternate center. I'm just trying to use just the tip of my brush. Just 
keep it rather sharp. Pull down some branches, a few in the center, and then as we work our way down, they'll get a little bigger. Break them up. turp out of your brush and get kind of rather dry. So this is what a little bit of snow would look like on a few branches. And I can do the same on this looser tree. Just add a few highlights. cleaning my brush each time. These look like little mounds of snow that caught on the upper parts of each branch. Now you could fire this and uh, put white non-ping enamel on the tips if you'd like and, or leave them just like they are. If you were continuing with a scene, then you'd probably want to go into your darkest brown with a scroller brush. Maybe shadow one side of that tree a little. Come back with a little medium value brown. Pump up that trunk if you thought you wanted a little more detail. And come in with any kind of foreground color and anchor that tree. I'm painting this with a synthetic brush so it's not real smooth, but if you wanted a snowbank, you would do something like this. And with your silk, just add a few highlights and I've got a quick little vignette or Christmas card or something on your ornament for background. So those are just a couple samples of the trees that I would um, would do. Now I also have this little winter scene that I always thought was kind of interesting with the, the little church hidden in the background. You can see these quick little evergreens here. They were done with a little filbert brush, or you could take an angled, smaller synthetic brush. You can see the ones in the back are a little cooler green, and the larger evergreens here are a little warmer green. So I can do a couple for you here. I sketched this out real quick just to show you how I might do a grouping of trees. I might start out with my uh, synthetic angle brush. Let's clean it a little bit. I've got a couple trees here that might be in the foreground, so maybe the trunks would show. I'll clean my scroller brush in odorless thinner and condition it in my oil a little bit. Let's go in to the brown, the lighter value of the brown, and let's just draw in a few trunks.
this helps me stay anchored so I, I know where I'm at, where I'm going, where I should be stopping that tree. We'll go, we'll start out with the filbert. Let's go into a little dark green and shading green because I'm going to do the background trees first. So I'm going to load that synthetic filbert with the shading green and a tiny bit of black green because this cooler green is going to set these um, smaller evergreens back. So let's tap, tap, tap at the tip. You really don't have to spend a lot of time doing this. Reload. And this should be a cooler, darker green. If it helps you to sketch out the whole tree, that's fine too. I think we do better if we just uh, freehand and stay loose. Let's go into a little more oil. Let's do another little tree back here. Different heights, different shades. Maybe we'll make this one a little scraggler than the other one. Not quite as perfect. And we'll go ahead and do this one in the background a little bit with load shading green, darkest green. Do we want to do a different type of tree? Maybe. Maybe we'll loosen this one up and not make it quite so perfect. Almost a little lopsided there. That makes for somewhat of an interesting tree. Now if I wanted to, I'd go back with a little plain darkest green. Punch up a little darker values in a few of those areas. But this little filbert that it gives you a little bit of a rounded branch, which I think makes for an interesting little look for a, an evergreen. All right, I'm going to clean that filbert now. Let's go into some warmer, a little bit warmer green. Antique, I'm going to load on both sides. Maybe add a little brown green. Um, our evergreens up north, they tend to get darker in the winter. So we don't want them too bright or too light. So tap, 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 tap. And pull on down. That might be even a little too warm for a wintertime tree, but. can see how these little touches of that tip create the individual branches and give them different shapes. It's actually kind of fun once you get started. The best thing you can do is practice.
continue on down. Maybe I could bring this one a little bit more into the foreground. Different heights. Um, change the perspective here a little bit. Bring this on down so it's closer to you. All right. Now I might do this one over here. Let's put a little darkest green into that brush. Brown green and a little darkest green. And give this one a little different color. Now I don't want these to be the same height, so I might want to cut that one down a little bit. They're still pretty close. So it takes a lot of practice uh, to kind of get comfortable with how you want to do uh, your trees. And you have to ask yourself, are they one of the main subjects or are they a background grouping in a forest? If they are, of course, they're less detailed. A little heavy there on the color, but let's go back with a clean angle brush and give this a little air here. Back to the filbert. Let's see if we can keep some air flowing through. I think it needs a couple little openings yet, but... So let's open it up a little bit. They say they need air holes for the birds to get through, so... Let's do a little of that. dry, dry, dry in the turp or the odorless mineral spirits, whichever you use. A little bit too much turp there, but that's okay. We'll let it dry up and bleed out. So you don't want these to be perfect cone shape. Get some good ins and outs and Interesting outer edges. These can overlap. So this is how I do simple little pine trees. Now if you wanted to complete this, you could use a square shader, condition it and come in with, you could come in with cool shadow or this is shading green. And then in another fire, of course, you could go in and do some background work and, or you could do it all at once. So they should, trees standing by themselves need shadow underneath. They need to be coming out of somewhere, so we'll add a little bit of snow. Connect to the edge a little bit. I might even go to a larger square shader. Just to move that color around a little quicker. Around that snow surface. And that's okay if they're darker under the tree because that creates a little shadow. Take my silk and 
push out a little snow bank. Soften. I might want to go back and take, bring a few of those branches now on over that snow. And this one might be partially behind that snow bank, but then coming out on this side would be kind of interesting. Poking out from behind the snow bank. A little shading green, bring this shading green, darkest green. Bring this one over slightly, and I think this would be just a nice little arrangement for uh, a little card. Little vignette. And if you wanted to complete this, then you could fire it like it is. You could come back in another fire then and wash in your clouds. Do a, in a monochromatic color scheme. And make sure that you got nice and dark behind your evergreens with your wash of color and wipe out your little uh, church outline and come through with your streaks of snow or just leave it like it is. You wouldn't have to put in the, the snow falling, the falling snow. And you can see there's a little wash of uh, cool shadow and shading green. Cool greens, warmer greens. So it's a whole mixture of greens and into some of the blue greens. And here's another smaller duller. The intensity on this is much duller. It's just a little quick example on a tile of things you can do if you want to make them real loose and carefree and looks like the wind might be blowing. Um, or you can just do something like this and fire and do whatever you want to to the background. Thanks for joining me on this video of my pine trees. Uh, the different ways that I paint them and what you can use for your brushes. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for reminders when I, my new videos come out. If you are interested in supplies or seminars, uh, please go to my website, vitascollectibles.com.